Cody, SummerSlam coming up soon. Shirt and tie, like that. He's excited. What about you? You, you, you. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Who cares? Anyways, I asked you for some questions pertaining to SummerSlam, past, present, future, and you gave them to me, you sons of guns. So now I gotta sit there and answer some of them. That's cool. Let's go ahead and dive right in. WNC Podcast kicks us off by asking, if HBK is Mr. WrestleMania, which he's not, I think it's The Undertaker, as you should, who is Mr. SummerSlam? Actually, I got that question several times, so for all of you that asked it, here's your answer. Uh, as far as the Mr. WrestleMania part, I've made my thoughts relatively well known about that. On a variety of different levels, it's The Undertaker. And if it's not, and if you want to focus on like star power and main eventing and importance, then it's Hogan. HBK is a distant, distant third, if even that. Just saying. Uh, the Mr. SummerSlam, though, like over the years, Bret the Hitman Hart got that label. And you know what? You could splice it and dice it and dissect it. But I'm kind of okay with him being Mr. SummerSlam. I really am. He had a lot of good matches at SummerSlam over the years. I'm not going to sit there and go against that. Like, when I think of SummerSlam, I look at it this way. When you think about WrestleMania, who's the first or maybe second guy that you think of? And not just because of pure markdom or bias or anything else, but who do you think of? And to me, that should be as much of an indicator of who you think is Mr. WrestleMania as anybody, because that's the person or people that you associate with the biggest event of the year. So for me, I think of Taker or Hogan. They're my Mr. WrestleManias. When I think of SummerSlam, as much as anybody else, I think about Bret the Hitman Hart. So I'm perfectly fine with saying he's Mr. SummerSlam. Kieran Chase asks, uh, which Bret Hart match do you enjoy the most? Bret versus Mr. Perfect at 91, Bret versus Bulldog at 92, or Bret and Owen in 94? Now, Bret and Owen has that great biblical Cain and Abel type of feel to it. Bret and Perfect was a classic to me in its own sense, especially when you understand just how bad off physically uh, Kurt Heading's back was then. But man, the IC title main evented SummerSlam 92 at Wembley Stadium. It's got to be Bretton Bulldog, man. It's got to be. It's got to be. The In The Rope Show, they're still alive! Hooray! What would you consider to be Mick Foley's best SummerSlam match? I don't know if it's his best SummerSlam match. But I still think my favorite in some ways, now that I think about it, is the Boiler Room Brawl with Taker in 96. It was the company trying to get outside of their comfort zone, trying to do something different. And the execution wasn't necessarily the best, but you know that whole Mankind character came at a time where the company was slowly starting to evolve and slowly starting to change, and this was kind of at the cutting edge or the beginning of it for them. Um, so when I think of like Foley, and you could say him and Triple H had an outstanding match uh, at SummerSlam, and they did. Uh, but when I think of it, like I, I always go back to the Boiler Room Brawl at 96. B.W. Rosas, did WWE make a mistake not booking Nexus to win in 2010? Does Magic Johnson have HIV? Yeah, damn right they did! They literally basically sabotaged everybody at that point in time. And if they didn't sabotage them in the fans' minds, they sabotaged them in their own minds in terms of their decision-making and their booking and their writing and their storytelling. Ah, we're so fucking stupid. Like, you're building up to all this. You've done all this crap with them for two months, and now they get to the point in time where it's assholes and elbows shit and get a nut-cutting, put the pedal to the metal time, and super sinistra. And that is plain and simple. That's all that happened. Cena couldn't get out of his own way, couldn't get out of his own bullshit, and he fucked them up forever. Just so, so bad. Like, if you were going to go with that in 2010 and you were going to have Team WWE beat the Nexus, then it needed to be Daniel Bryan beating Wade Barrett. That would have been the logical thing. That would have been the most sensible thing. Not what the fuck they did. Michael Corbin! Your top five SummerSlams or SummerSlam matches, I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, on this channel, there are videos pertaining to top five SummerSlams of all time, top five SummerSlam matches of all time, and if there's not, please correct me on that. I do not have a time for time to think about them right now, 
I will tell you what I am probably going to do as we get into 2019, I'm probably going to redo all the retro review series, meaning I'm thinking about it. I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm thinking about re-reviewing every single Royal Rumble and then re-reviewing every single WrestleMania and then re-reviewing every single SummerSlam, every single Survivor Series. Maybe I would throw money in the bank into the mix. I'm not sure yet. But it's something I've you know, thought about, pondered, knowing it's going to take a ton of time, and I'm not sure if I'm going to fully have the time to be able to do it. Uh, but it's something I want to do, like take another look back a few years later. I think it would be kind of interesting. So stay tuned. Vala's fan. Am I wrong to think Owen beating Brett in the cage would have been better than what happened? You know, there's a part of me that I always wish they would have went with Owen beating Brett for the title, and SummerSlam 94 was a perfect place to do it. So I do think in some ways, yes, it could have been better if he would have done so. Chris Christopher, how angry will you be if Kevin Owens beats Braun Strowman for the briefcase? It'll be annoying. It'll be like, what the fuck are you doing? But in the grand scheme of things, does it matter? Probably not. Probably not. But it would be annoying, that's for sure. And something surely I would be ranting about in the SummerSlam review. That you could put your money on. Horror Movie Review 73. Your best SummerSlam from the Attitude Era. Probably 98, isn't it? Probably. Most certainly not 2001, because fuck the invasion angle! MIM Arsenal. Most overrated SummerSlam of all time. Um, Excellent, excellent question. And I don't say this to get heat, but I also say when you look at the reality of it, SummerSlam 92 is massively overrated. In, in a sense. Because primarily, a lot of people that pump up SummerSlam 92 usually can only think about one match and only enjoy one match off of that show and can honestly only name one match off of that show. It is, in a lot of ways, a one-match show. Now, for me, most certainly, it is not. There are so many other cool things that happened on that event, on that show. But for a lot of people, again, it's a one-match show. Hard to call it the greatest show of all time, SummerSlam-wise, when people only remember one match or cared about one match. So in terms of that sense, that's probably what I would look at as the most overrated of all time. Now, it's not to me, because I enjoy a lot more about that SummerSlam than just that one match, that main event for the IC title, which still, to me, holds up the test of time. Uh, there were other things on that show. Uh, Danny Boy, will Vince actually let Brock keep the title and potentially have the belt when he goes fight in UFC? At this point, anything is possible. I doubt it, but anything is possible, and I wouldn't dismiss it. Nerdaholics, thoughts on Braun Strowman's comments about getting into shape and leaving the bellies to Kevin Owens and getting zero reaction for it. You're fucking surprised? Th this surprises you in any way whatsoever? If he would have sat there and replaced Kevin Owens with Nia Jax, it would have been a whole shitstorm of controversy, and everybody fucking knows that. But it is socially acceptable for me to call Kevin Owens a fat boy, but if I sat there and called Nia Jax a fat girl, I'm going to be called a fat shamer and a sexist pig and all this other crap. Never mind the fact that I'd be much more likely to want to stick it in Nia Jax than I would a lot of other women on the roster, in part because of her size and her shape. You know, that doesn't fucking matter. You already know, Nerdaholics, this is a hypocritical world we live in. And the feminazis and the fuckboys don't care about that type of stuff. Because it's not about being fair or equal. It only matters when it matters. And the rest of the time, consistency doesn't matter. From a fairness standpoint, it absolutely should matter every bit as much as Dave Meltzer making light of Peyton Royce's fake fun bags. But we know it doesn't, and there's no mystery as to why. So it's not a fucking surprise, and it shouldn't be to you. And if it is, I just wonder how much of a sheltered life you're living currently. Sam T, what do you think about Double J's lawsuit against Impact Wrestling? I didn't know there was one. Like, real talk. I didn't know there was one, and I don't know that I care. Alfredo Regalado, if Samoa Joe wins, how long do you think he'll be champion? I can't imagine he would carry the strap very long. Maybe to like a Survivor Series and that's about it. Somewhere in that time frame. October to December. I don't envision Vince being bought into him as a long-term champ. Magnificent Matt. As the years go by, do you get more excited for SummerSlam or WrestleMania? Uh, by far WrestleMania because it's the biggest show of the year. 
WrestleMania is WrestleMania. Nothing else the company does measures up to it. And frankly, when it comes to SummerSlam, it's always been like third or fourth in my excitement level in terms of the big four anyways. Because to me, Royal Rumble, you know, just because of the match and what it represents is something that I get more excited about, especially because that's really kind of your beginning of the road to WrestleMania. And for me, being old school, I used to look forward to Survivor Series more. Now, in recent years, it probably has leaned more SummerSlam, but SummerSlam is probably only third. That's a pretty steady third at that. Icon Living, does SummerSlam 2005 hold up today as it did back then? That is an excellent question. I haven't rewatched that show in a few years. And if I decide in 2019 to do all the big four review series again, I might have a better answer for you at that time. James Faluca, what did you think of the Boiler Room Brawl? I think about it now, and I don't even remember what I said about it in the review a few years back, you know, because they had some of the camera issues and so forth. They tried and it kind of fell flat, but as the years go by more and more, I have a greater appreciation for it. I like it more and more. Because it was at the time, it was something new, it was something different for the company, and I always like new and different. Um, Georgian Fulia, what do you think about the Miz, Daniel Bryan, SummerSlam buildup? Haven't really been watching SmackDown, Raw, nothing, none of that stuff. So I'm not really up to date or familiar with the buildup uh, to these matches, especially the big feature matches. And, and I'll say as far as Miz and Daniel Bryan, it's almost to my benefit because I don't care what the company's doing because I don't need to care what they're doing currently because there's all those years of history between these two guys and the kind of polar opposite things that they represent. I don't need a buildup for this match. I absolutely do not. So I don't care what they're doing for the buildup because it has zero impact on me. And for that, I'm thankful. Martin Hall. Would you rather wrestlers use their real names instead of being characters or pretending to be somebody else? If you were going off of a true like reality era, then there would be some type of appeal to having their real names. But think about it. A lot of actors and so forth, comedians, um, they use stage names, fake names. So what's so different here with wrestlers? If anything, I would prefer the wrestlers to 100% be the wrestlers they are when they're wrestling. And then as soon as they're away from that, their social media should be the real shit. And they should be real people. Like there should be a real split between the two. Let's not kid ourselves. Everybody knows what wrestling is and what it's about. So why not sit there and have them be the characters that they are to more align with TV show and movies. And then when they're outside of that, they're real people and you're portraying them as actors and so forth. Either that, or you're going to go kayfabe 24-7. To me, those one of the two ways to go. Um, so I'm, I'm not that huge on it. Um, to me, I'm, I appreciate now more that the WWE is allowing AJ Styles to be AJ Styles, not like Anthony Sims or something like that. That's the type of fucking name they would have given him like five, six years ago because they've been like, we got to own the naming rights. we got to have that as our intellectual property. Samoa Joe is going to be uh, Tonga Tim or some bullshit like that. You know, we got away from that, so that's good. And this is MZP closes us off by asking, worst booking decision in SummerSlam history. CM Punk and what they did in 2011? Or the Nexus in 2010? CM Punk in 2011, the Nexus in 2010. Still got to go with the Nexus because they buried a whole bunch of people that day. People still remember it to this day. But anyways, thanks to all of you that submitted your questions. It's been a blast. Hopefully SummerSlam this year can be that too, although I certainly doubt it. Anyways, this is the Shirt and Tie Schleg Daddy. This is OTR Essential. Remember, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Just like the t-shirt says that none of you jabokes buy. And you should, damn it. Anyways, I'll see you for SummerSlam.